All right, what's going on guys? Uh, it's Gio and we're back with part two of this video series. We're gonna be doing the piston balancing for the N20 B20A that we are putting back into my car. So right here I have two of the pistons. First of which I've already went through and done uh, just to figure out how I wanna do things. Um, second of which is just a brand new piston so that we can see the difference in, in uh, how they do this or how this is getting done. So we can see here on the one that I've done that decides to focus, that there is a nice chamfer all the way around the edge here. I tried not to touch this area all that much. I did kiss it just a little bit with the with the roll just so that uh, it would continue the transition all the way through and I didn't have any of the standard chamfer left so that it was all uh, consistent and width. Um, but I did not remove a ton of material from here. Uh, going to the standard one, you can see uh, there is a little bit of a actual chamfer around the edges here. So that is where we are adding or removing material from is mostly in this area here where there is a ton of material and then we will also be trying to remove it from this area a little bit just so that then it continues the transition and loops all the way around just so it's consistent and the way we're going to be doing that is using a Dremel with a sanding barrel. Um, you could use a carbide burr, I just didn't want to do something that was so aggressive. So we are just using a Dremel attachment on a cord just so it's a little bit easier to hold. And then we are using, I believe this is an, this is a 120 grit or a, uh, actually no, this is an 80 grit uh, barrel. And then after that I'm following it up with a 120 or a 240 barrel just to smooth it out so that then I don't leave any uh, like st stress risers on the surface. So you can see here on this one that the finish isn't, uh, is smooth. It's not, it's not super, like, there's not hard lines carved into it from this, and it's, uh, it's a smooth transition, and then as well as there's no sharp edges around the edge, uh, around the edge, so that then it keeps from introducing points of failure. But, basically, I'm gonna put it onto a time lapse, and we are gonna go ahead and just use this, and go ahead and start removing material. But before I go ahead and do that, we can go ahead and weigh the actual piston here. Now this one I know is supposed to be 347, but we'll just double check because I am removing 1.2 grams of material from this piston as well as from piston 4. Those are the only two I have left to do. So let's go ahead and take a look. And I'll bring you guys over for this. So the scale's been zeroed out and I just set the piston down and you can see that we are at 347 grams. Now, I do want this to be repeatable, so I am gonna go ahead and do it one more time. And 346.9, but I, it is placed a little off-center, so we'll do it one more time. So placed in the center of the scale, you can see it is 347 grams. So, we can go ahead and get started removing material, and it is gonna be the same process for the for piston four. Um, I'm just gonna time-lapse this one, and probably four as well, just so that then we can go ahead and get these all done. This isn't gonna be a long, a super long video. This is basically just to show how I'm doing this, and to give you a basic idea of it. If you want a more detailed video on this, I would definitely recommend watching Horsepower Academy's video. Uh, it's very thorough. They explain why you want to remove material from here as opposed to anywhere else on the piston and what places you don't want to remove material from and why. So that's a very informative video. Um, I'm not here to copy their video, so this is just going to be me documenting myself for my own build and so that you guys can see and come along the pro and come through the process with me. But anyway, let's go ahead and get into it. I would like to note that I am also using a can of compressed air for a keyboard to go ahead and blow out any of the residual metal filings or dust that's in here so that it doesn't skew off the results for the actual weight. So I went ahead and I removed a little bit more material again and I'm going to go ahead and weigh it and continue on with the process. But yeah, 
Good idea. Go ahead and use a can of keyboard dust air. Go ahead and blow out everything in here. Go through the holes where the oil is going to be coming through. One, it's good practice so that you can make sure you're getting an accurate weight measurement. And two, it'll make sure that you don't end up with metal in areas where it's going to be lubricating, rotating components like your wrist pin. Because these are a floating style, so they will be completely free to move. So the last thing you want to do is score that and then end up with a groove in your, in your wrist pin. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and continue on and I'll catch back up with you again once I'm finished. Alright, so a long while later I have got the piston down to the correct weight. We were aiming for 345.8 grams. That's exactly where it's sitting at now. So now when we add up the small end of connecting rod uh, 2 and then adding it to um, adding it to this piston then we will go ahead and be able to match it up. Alright, and just, just so to verify we do have 345.8 grams, and it is repeatable. All right, so now I can go ahead and do the last piston and we'll be all set. We are going to be balancing the connecting rods themselves. Uh, if you watched the last video where we were balancing the pistons, you would know that we did not, we are not gonna be taking anything off the pin end because we wanted to leave these ridges here, or ribs here, and we didn't want to remove material, or I didn't want to remove material and affect the structure of this area. Since it is a fairly slim ridge, I didn't want to grind it completely off trying to remove all of the material. So, coming on to, continuing on, we're going to be taking material off of the big end of the rod here, and we are going to be removing material from this area here. We don't want to remove anything from this, uh, the rod cap, because as you can see, there are also ribs here which are structural and are important for keeping the rod together and giving it strength. So we're gonna machine here, 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 and here. So that'll be the best as far as being able to remove material without seriously uh -huh. affecting the structural integrity of the piece. Okay, so the way we're gonna be doing this is in very much the same way that we were doing the pistons using the sanding drums on a Dremel or a rotary tool, die grinder, which, whichever you wanna use. Um, you can also do this using a belt sander and that would probably be a little bit easier. I just don't have one, nor did I see the benefit to actually spending the cost to use it for this one particular instance. Um, there's a chance I may buy one in the future for different fabrication projects if I decide to go that route. But right now all I'm doing is I'm taking off a 220 grit or 240 grit barrel and going to a coarser uh, 80 grit. Uh, I'm doing this so I can remove material a little bit faster and then I will follow up when I get close to the figure that I'm looking for with the, with the 200 grit just to smooth out the finish to avoid leaving stress risers or a surface that has uh, deep gouges in one particular area. For this we are doing the same thing we did with the pistons. We are weighing them to check what the weight is baseline and then we already know how much we have to remove off. So I'm going to keep going and then keep measuring to just get it within that and I am doing it by the total weight just because I have already measured the individual ends so I did not see a need to go ahead and keep re-measuring it on the fixture when I know that the total is correct and I know how much material I am removing and I'm only removing it from this end. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on that and I will check back in once I get, well once I get to tolerance. Uh, we are aiming for within a tenth of a gram to the other rods, which is, again, probably overkill for my situation, uh, and carbon deposits and oil on the rods itself will probably skew that past a tenth of a gram. But if I can control it and take care of it now, I might as well. It's the same methodology as far as what, like, Horsepower Academy talks about as well in their videos, um, or HP Academy. So, uh, actually, I believe it's High Performance Academy, but <laughs> either way, we'll go with HP Academy to avoid me butchering their name anymore. And yeah, so I'm basically following their procedure as far as what to do with this. They didn't really go into talking about rods that have this sort of integral portion that it, um, as far as I could find, I think I found one area on their forum talking about it where they said that you can do it lightly, but with the amount of material I had to remove, I 
didn't think it would be accomplishable without completely removing these, and I wanted to avoid that. But anyway, I'm going to get into it and put it onto a time lapse or fast forward, and yeah, so I'll get back to you once that's all done. Okay, one thing I'm going to point out with this is that this is a much more dense material, so you don't have to remove as much of this material to get the same effect as with the pistons. So these are a 4340 where the pistons are a 2618, so getting the material off of here to decrease the weight is actually happening a lot faster. I've only done two of the sides and I've already lost 0.2 of a gram, and that is just barely touching the surface with, with this sander, or with the Dremel. So I'm going to continue going on slowly and hopefully go ahead and get this balanced out a lot faster than the pistons did. The pistons took me uh, probably a couple of, couple of hours working slowly and double checking my work often, um, whereas these I'm imagining will probably be done within the hour. Anyway, let's go ahead and continue. All right, so we finished up with the initial passes and you can see here the area that I have been sanding. And you can also see all of the lines that are uh, going along the rod. So that's why I, we're gonna switch over to the finer sandpaper to hopefully knock those all down and smooth it out so that then you don't have these peaks sitting in this area to potentially induce stress. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and continue with that and I'll get back to you after it's all finished up. All right, so after going back, we've got it matched to the other rod now. And looking at it, you can see that the surface finish on the edge of this is, the finish of it now is a lot smoother and there's not as deep of a ridge or a line running along the edge of it. So this is exactly where we're gonna leave it. And that's balanced for this one. So now I just gotta complete it, come repeat that with the other two and then we'll be all set.